Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, February the 24th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, angry Ukrainians put out a warrant for their own president. Then, what the FDA's new regulations could mean for organic food in the U.S. And gun control backfires on Pierce Morgan. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. This will be a day long remembered. We've seen the end of Morgan. We'll soon see the end of CNN. Well, Piers Morgan and Obama are learning the true meaning of blowback. As Piers Morgan's ratings fall to the cellar and his show gets canceled, Obama is seeing gun sales rise to the highest level they've been. And of course, the Supreme Court is sitting on the sidelines quibbling about the semantics of the Second Amendment. Now, in this story today from Paul Joseph Watson on InfoWars, he says, Piers Morgan admits gun control advocacy led to a show being axed. Now, if you remember, Alex is about the only blip that he's had in his show in a constant downturn since he took it over. But the very fact that he wouldn't have Alex back on the show showed that they really weren't concerned about news or ratings, simply about pushing their agenda and they didn't think they did a very good job of that either. Now look at his comments. He said, I'm a British guy debating American cultural issues, including guns. Well, you know what? There's a lot more than just cultural issues involved. Yes, there is a cultural difference. They've done a lot to make people afraid of gun owners and afraid of guns, but it's far more than that. As Alex pointed out, it's about our fundamental rights. It's about keeping this country safe from criminals as well as from tyrants. And Really, Piers Morgan is nothing other than just a tool. It's pretty clear when he got a free pass from both the U.S. and the U.K. government, even though he is involved in a wiretapping scandal, one that he was masterminding at the newspaper where he was an editor, and he gets a free pass. He gets to leave the country, come over here, not get extradited. Alex is going to have a lot more about this at the end of the show, so stay tuned. He's going to tell you what this tells us about CNN and the rest of the mainstream media. Now, as far as Obama and firearm sales, they're going through the roof, as we all know, last year. We've now seen the sales figures from 2012 released by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And we see that just in the first four years, from 2009 to 12, that he's sold more firearms than were sold by the entire eight years of the Bush administration. So he sold uh, about 25 million, actually it's about the same amount, 25 and 26. But in 2013, if you look at this graph at the bottom of the article there, there's a, you can see this going straight up and they say, wait until you see the figures for 2013. Well, of course, we all know that. You couldn't get guns, you couldn't get ammunition. If you were in the market, you certainly know that. And things are changing now at the state level. As we pointed out in an article today, there's a pushback at Missouri. They're starting to exercise their 10th Amendment rights against overreach by the federal government. But of course, the Supreme Court is not necessarily going to be our ally on this. We've had two Supreme Court decisions back in 2008 and then 2010 that came down on the right side that says, yes, the right of the people is an individual right. It's not a collective right. It's not something that you get for being in the National Guard. They came down on the right issue of that in both Washington, D.C., and Heller versus D.C., and in Chicago, McDonald versus Chicago. That second case was to establish that it was a right everywhere, not just in the District of Columbia. So now they're looking at other aspects. They wanted to get them to take a look at the carry aspect of it. What does it mean to bear arms now that we have had their pronouncement that it's an individual right, even though, of course, Washington, D.C., and Chicago have found other ways to infringe those rights? And that's another discussion we'll have to have as to what exactly does the word infringe mean. We certainly know what it means because we've seen the governments doing it. But they have rejected hearing a couple of court cases that people were hoping would bring the issue up of what it means to bear arms. But these two cases, actually there was three cases, I believe, but a couple of them were questioning the rights to withhold firearms from people between the ages of 18 and 21, even though they're old enough to fight in the army. Now, there are still other open carry cases that are going to be coming before the Supreme Court for review. There was Peruta versus the County of San Diego, which just happened February the 13th. A lot of people feel that that, as well as some other cases, may be heard. But this article that came out yesterday, where a former Supreme Court justice wants to add five words to the Second Amendment. This is reported from BizPack Review. You know what? The Supreme Court justices just don't get it. 
they don't get to amend the Second Amendment. That's not how it gets amended. There is a constitutional process, and it's not by a Supreme Court decision. And he lost this argument in both 2008 and 2010. Heller and McDonald, he lost the argument that says the right of the people to keep and bear arms when serving in the militia. He, those are the words that he wants to add. He wants to make it a condition of serving in the militia. Well, the militia isn't something you serve in. The militia is the people. That's why it is a right of the people. Now, we reported last Thursday, uh, we had a, an interview. We were trying to get some information from the FCC about their planned news study that was going to intrude into the content of newsrooms. It was going to study the newsrooms. So we tried to get some information about that study. They completely stonewalled us. You saw that if you watched that on the nightly news last Thursday. Then on Friday, we reviewed it, talked a little bit more detail about it on the Alex Jones radio show. And then Friday evening, the FCC announced that they are going to cancel that study, if you can believe them. This is a report from the Daily News. It says the FCC backs down from a study and won't ask journalists how they gather the news. Under a government research project, questioning reporters on their news gathering has caused the FCC commission to rethink its approach. Well, maybe and maybe not. Because if you look at their article, it says the FCC spokesperson announced that the questions targeted to journalists would be scrapped and the study would be reworked. Well, it wasn't just journalists that they were going to be asking questions to. They were also going to be asking questions to editors, to managers, to many people there, even to newspapers. The FCC has no jurisdiction over newspapers. The FCC was created simply to allocate in an orderly manner the frequencies that were available that belong to the public. They're not there to get involved in content. And so you have to ask yourself, what are they going to do in the future? Are they going to continue to ask these other questions? Are they going to try to involve themselves in the content that people are putting out? You know, when this was reported, the Washington Post, as Paul Joseph Watson pointed out, had the headline, Proposed FCC Study of News Organizations Sparks Conservative Outcry. And they quickly changed that and removed the word conservative because the liberal papers weren't really concerned about that. Was this planned to be something like we see with the IRS where they start auditing all these different Tea Party groups and then giving the information to their opponents to embarrass them or to single them out for criminal investigation? If they're going to embed themselves into studios, would they find people that were the movers and shakers against the government's agenda and then target them individually? It's very troubling to see this kind of thing happen. And it now brings up the point as to what is the FCC going to do about the Comcast merger? We already know that the mainstream media has effectively merged with a government, but we know that the government wants to get the, not only the content providers, which Comcast is part of, but also the delivery system. They want to have one company that they can deal with, one person they can deal with, instead of just five media companies. They'll now, if these first and second largest uh, providers merge, they're going to have one giant company and three smaller ones, so they will probably merge and then you can eventually have one. That is a very dangerous situation. What will the FCC do about that? We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, the Ukraine has actually deposed the dictator that was there, Yanukovych. He's now on the run. This is reported from Business Insider that they have now put out an arrest warrant for Viktor Yanukovych. They say it's clear that he's lost power in Kiev, and they put on Facebook, of all places, that they were going to come after him for the deaths of protesters. And now it leaked the details of his palatial residence. It's half the size of the country of Monaco. It's got a private zoo, private golf course, a floating restaurant that looks like a pirate ship. A little bit of irony there. But are they going to get rid of this dictator and then jump into the frying pan of the EU? Because we've seen how the EU bankers have deposed elected leaders and put bankers in charge in both Italy and Greece. This is something they ought to watch the debate that's coming up between Nigel Farage and Nick Clegg. This is going to be an amazing debate. As the BBC reported it, the EU debate with Nigel Farage will be tough for Nick Clegg. That is the understatement of the century. I would pay to see this on pay-per-view to, to see someone debate Nigel Farage and especially on the EU. This is something people in Ukraine seriously, though, should take a look at and see why those in, in Britain and many other places are concerned about the EU and why they should stay out of it. But this is going to be an amazing debate, and I can't understand anyone wanting to get into that debate unless they've got the mentality of a third-rank bank clerk, as Nigel Farage would point out. 
Well, you know, there's been a lot of attacks on family farms, and we've got an interview tonight with someone who has a family farm and has been under attack for almost three years now, but a new attack is surfacing. We've had attacks in the past from the Labor Department. It's just a year ago that Obama's Labor Department said that they were going to strengthen rules on child farm labor. That was a CNN headline. We've also seen that the EPA said that they were going to start regulating dust on the farm. Well, both of those were fought back, and now we have some new proposed regulations that are coming from the FDA. The LA Times uh, reports that planned food safety rules are riling organic farmers. And listen to the way this is presented. This guy's got a farm, and he says a guy walked up to him, and the guy said, this is my badge, these are the fines, this is what is hanging over your head, and we want you to know that. Just outright intimidation. What are they intimidating them about? Well, the fact that they use natural fertilizer, the fact that they make their fertilizer instead of buying it from a giant petrochemical farm, the fact that they don't use pesticides, they're coming after small family farms, they're looking for every angle that they can. This is very disturbing. And they portray this as if it were coming from consumers. We all know where this is coming from. It's coming from big agra. The Food and Drug Administration is their weapon to take down their competition. And it isn't just a concern to individual farmers. This is something you should be concerned about because this is the type of tactic they use against every small business. And this is going to affect you as a consumer of food. And we all are consumers of food. It's going to concern your access to healthy and safe heritage foods, things that are not grown in a factory environment, things that are not genetically engineered. That's something we should all be concerned about. And we have an interview right after the break with someone who has been fighting the government on this very issue. So please stay tuned. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, welcome back. Now, we've talked a lot about Monsanto's GMO pollen cross-contaminating other fields. And he, instead of treating it as a trespass, they're allowed to treat it as if it was property theft. And we've also talked about how the government will come after raw milk producers, even SWAT teaming them. There are many issues of this where they are coming after our...